The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, you are the salt of the earth. But if salt has lost its taste, how can its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything, but is thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hid. No one, after lighting a lamp, puts it under the bushel basket, but on the lampstand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. Do not think that I have come to abolish the law of the prophets. I have come not to abolish, but to fulfill. For truly I tell you, until heaven and earth pass away, not one letter, not one stroke of a letter will pass from the law until all is accomplished. Therefore, whoever breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same, will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does them and teaches them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I tell you, unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and the Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. Some of you know that one of my favorite authors is the Episcopal priest and preacher, wonderful preacher, Barbara Brown Taylor. She has written a number of books compiling some of her best sermons. She has also written books telling her story from the time she was a pastor, uh, a rector in a church in Georgia, to going to teach in a college. And she's written a number of other books. And one of them is one that intrigues me. I've read it a number of times. I've given it to friends. and. It's called Learning to Walk in the Dark. And in this book, Taylor talks about the fact that darkness is not always negative, that it's not always something to fear, that the darkness can be good. It can teach us. We can learn from the dark. And she says that she needs both darkness and light in her life. 
And when I read this book, I am reminded of what Dr. King said when he said, only when it is dark enough can you see the stars. And so, I, I, as I said, I'm not sure I like this book, <laughs> but I'm intrigued by it. But the fact remains, my friends, is I don't like the dark. I don't like it at all. When the power goes out in Moorhead City, which it does fairly frequently, <laughs> it's a little scary. My condo at night is extremely dark. There aren't many windows, so the moon and the street lights don't come in. And when the power goes out, you can't even see the moonlight or the starlight. It is just plain dark. And when the light comes on, when the power comes on, I am relieved and comforted by that light. And I even, I'm almost embarrassed to tell you this, there are times when I keep a light on all night long, a little 15 watt bulb, because I like the light. My living room looks like a runway at night with, <laughs> with the light on so bright. Drives my sister crazy when she comes to visit because she likes lamp light. I don't think I have a lamp in my living room. I've just got overhead light. The ancient peoples loved the light. They named their gods, gods of light. The ancient peoples feared the dark and the light was their companion, their comfort, it was essential and is essential to human life on Earth. We need the darkness, we need the light. So it's essential, it was to the ancient peoples and it is to us. It illumines our lives, it comforts us. To the ancient Hebrews, it meant a great deal. If you read the Old Testament, different prophets and, and Psalms, you hear how much light meant to the Hebrew people. The very first words out of the mouth of God are what? Let there be light. Let there be light. And there was light. And Moses, tending the flock of sheep of his father-in-law, saw in the distance a bright light and he was drawn to that light, and he went to it, and behold, he saw a bush that burned but was not consumed. And the words of God came from the bush. He was drawn to the light, to the words of God. And he was commissioned to go forth to Pharaoh that his people might be set free. And what about the psalmist? We heard a little of it this morning. Psalm 27 says, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Of whom shall I fear? And the last example I want to give is the prophet Isaiah, who says, Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord shall be revealed and nations shall stream to your light and kings to the brightness of your dawning. Light, it is essential. It illumines our lives and our world. It comforts us, light. And in the New Testament, Jesus says, you are the light of the world. You. Take your light and cast out the darkness through your good works. You, me, us, we are the light of the world. But what does that mean? What does that mean? I think it means, and, and you could probably ask five different priests and they'd all say five different things, but to me, it is the light of God's love, the light of God's mercy, the light of God's justice, the
the light of God's presence in our lives that we reflect outward. Remember last week, you may remember last week, we heard in our Old Testament reading the greatest, I think, one of the greatest questions in all of Scripture. And the question is, and what does the Lord require of you? But that you do justice, you love kindness, and walk humbly with your God. Kindness, we talked about that, ever talked about that last week. Mercy. The light of Christ, the light of God, is the light of love and the way we walk with God, his presence, the light of his presence in our lives. And we have to be open to it. We have to be willing to accept that light in our lives. Let that light shine in our lives in our spiritual life, as we walk humbly with God and God walks with us in prayer, in our ministries. But it begins with that spiritual sense of the presence of God, doesn't it? It, be it be begins with God's coming to us. And through that Holy Spirit, inspiring us and empowering us and giving us the support to do what God, what Jesus calls us to do, you are the light of the world. That means taking that light that we have received and we have accepted into our world. And we do that here in church when we comfort someone in church here who is going through a dark period, or we rejoice with them when they are feeling joy. We help those who are in need in our parish, need of love, need of friendship. Perhaps they're lonely and they want and need companionship. That's sharing our light. And of course, you know well we take that light of Christ, the light of his love, into our community. We do it. All you have to do is go down to the parish hall and look at the tables, and there's soup and, and green beans and all this food for Hope Mission, and there's food for the nurses on the heart unit, and there's meals on wheels on... There, it's taking that love, that light that we talk about so much in here, taking it beyond ourselves, reaching beyond ourselves to our community. I attend Preshaw Group every Wednesday. I don't knit and I don't crochet. I just talk. <laughs> Which may be good or not, but whatever. And there was a card that had been sent to the prayer shawl group from a family of a woman who had received the shawl. And she was um, elderly. She looked to be maybe in her 90s. And she looked very frail. And the implication in the card was that she struggled, perhaps with memory, but she had tremendous character on her face. I couldn't believe it. The, the life lived boldly. Yeah. And they said she stroked the shawl, touched it as it was around her shoulders. The hands that knit and crochet are sending the light of God's love and kindness beyond the walls of this church. And that's what we do. And what about the world? What about even reaching out even farther? Well, what can we do? I mean, how do we stop the violence? How do we stop the hatred and the bigotry and the prejudice and the indifference? What can we do? We can pray. 
If it be what God is calling us to do, we can share our treasure. We can do any number of things to serve not just one another or our community, but our world. We can see the light of our world, of our earth, shining, and we must be drawn to it, I believe, to share our abundance and our treasure. One more thought before I close. I've had this image going through my mind all week since I started preparing for this sermon. And I'm not sure the image really has, does it have a lot to do with what I'm talking about? I don't know, but I can't get it out of my mind. And I want to share it with you. Ever since I was a little girl, I have loved the space program. When I was real little, I followed the Mercury astronauts and the Mercury flights. And then I followed the Gemini flights. And when I was a teenager, I even followed the Apollo flights to the moon. I loved it. And I remember in 1968, that difficult year for our nation and that difficult year for me, I was 16. And two of my beloved heroes had been struck down by assassin's bullets. And my own dad died. It was a rough year. But at Christmas time in December, Apollo 8 left the Earth's atmosphere and was pulled into the moon's atmosphere and orbited the moon. Now, they didn't land. That was Apollo 11. But Apollo 8 was the first human beings to orbit the moon. And on Christmas Eve, the three astronauts read the following. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And the earth was without form and void. And the spirit moved upon the face of the deep. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. And on that trip to the moon, something amazing happened. As they were circling the moon, they looked into the blackness of space. And rising up on the horizon was the earth, far in the distance. This beautiful planet rising over the horizon. And they took a photograph, and it's probably the most beautiful photograph in history. It's called Earth Rise. And it was in the magazines of the day, Look Magazine and Life Magazine. And when I think of earth rise, I think of us arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord is revealed, and that planet with its bright oceans shining in the blackness of space and the dark places as well, calls us to be the people of God and to let our light shine in our church, in our community, and in our world. We are the light of the world, Jesus says. And so, my friends, my prayer for us is, in the words of, excuse me, in the words of the children's song, This little light of mine, we're going to let it shine. Amen. Please stand. The Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. 
We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, God not made, of the one being with the Father, through him all things he was made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate for the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again, and according to the scriptures, he has seated in heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, from the Father and the Son, and the Exhorter and the Lord. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look at the resurrection of the dead and the life. The prayers of the people. In peace we pray to you, Lord God. For all people in their daily life and work. For our For this community, the nation, and the world. For all the work for justice, freedom, and peace. For the just and proper use of your creation. For all those in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For the peace and unity of the Church of God. For Michael, our presiding bishop, Rob, our bishop, and Father Everett, Mother Chris, and for all bishops and other ministers. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation, Dick Watson, Bruce, Valerie and Mark Roig, Jean Lawrence, Carol G, Dave B, Eleanor R, Della Scott, Bob S, Pat and Jean W, Geraldine, Betty. Are there others? Hear us, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. In thanksgiving for the daughters of the King candidates who are undertaking their discernment journey. Are there others? We will exalt you, O God, our King. We pray for all who have died that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Lord, excuse me, are there others? Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them who put their trust in you. In the diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for the 140th convention of the Diocese of East Carolina. In the ecumenical cycle of prayer, we give thanks for Cape Carteret Baptist Church and Cape Carteret Presbyterian Church, both located in Cape Carteret. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we only repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us. 
that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Ascribe to the Lord the honor to his day, bring offerings and commit to his courts. I wanted to talk a second about the, the anthem um, today. It's not the one printed in your in your program. We actually did that a couple of weeks ago. The, the season of Epiphany has, I didn't know a lot about it being from a Baptist background, but it's, it's turned into my, my, my favorite season and all the things that Mother Chris just talked about with, with the light and the hope of the, of the world. The anthem today um, is, an epiph is, is an Epiphany hymn. Um, what star is this with, with being so bright? And I just want to piggyback on, on what Mother Chris was talking to us about, the, the middle two verses. And because our choir doesn't always sing with, with very good enunciation, I want to make sure that, that, that you get the words. Um, so, so listen and, and, and listen carefully. While outward signs the star displays, in inward light the Lord conveys and urges them with tender mic to seek the giver of the light. O Jesus, fount of boundless grace, your star calls us to seek your face. Prepare our hearts to fully shine and share your light and love divine. Oh, my God. 
something's likely to get said from here today, and I want to get you ready for it. You know, I made a commitment some time back to uh, always give to people who were asking for money, money, people who were standing out in front of Walmart or Harris Teeter or somewhere. And so I try to keep some money on, on me so that I can give it to them. And there was, uh, and normally nothing gets said at all during those exchanges. Maybe thank you, of course. <laughs> uh, that's not the way it went this week. It was a man. And uh, I, I certainly didn't expect that there would be anything said between us. I just didn't think so. So I put the money in his hand, and he looked up and said, I love you too. I wasn't quite ready for that. And you might not be ready for it either. But that's what's going to get said from this altar, from God to you. I love you. I love you too. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord. It is truly right and good and joyful always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, because of the mystery of the word made flesh, you have caused a new light to shine in our hearts to give the knowledge of your glory in the face of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you, in your mercy, sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. 
After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. When you drink, whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ is God. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O oh Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension. We offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him, and with him, and in him. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and give us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, and deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Stand. Let us pray together. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us out of the world in peace. Grant us strength and courage. Love and serve let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we thank you for the gift of the prayer shawl group. We thank you for the hands that lovingly made these shawls. We pray that those who receive them will feel the light of we especially ask your blessing on this pink one right here. For Lord, we know it will go to a grieving child. We know that their life is hard right now. And we pray that this shawl will give her comfort. We thank you, Lord, for your many blessings. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and fill you with, with peace and joy, both now and forevermore. Amen. <laughs>